checking in from day four of the NFL Combine. Today was wide receivers and running backs, and the San Francisco 49ers have been active uh, with the wide receivers for sure, um, but also some running backs as well. And so I'm gonna give you a list of all the wide receivers and running backs that the San Francisco 49ers have formally met with and or had informal meetings, Zooms, stuff like that. But before we get into that, the, the big three that a lot of 49er fans are super interested in are the legacy players. Frank Gore Jr., Brandon Rice, and Luke McCaffrey, right? We all know who, who they're related to, um, and every single one of them is coming from a 49ers legend. Uh, so we got to talk to all three, um, and all three have had some kind of meeting with the San Francisco 49ers. Brendan Rice had a formal meeting. Um, shout out to Chase Sr. of Chat Sports. Um, front row and center, got the questions in uh, and got the info. Um, but Brandon Rice confirmed that he met with the San Francisco 49ers, of course, Jerry Rice's son. And then um, my guy, Jason Aponte, asked uh, Frank Gore Jr. Um, if he had met with the 49ers and he said that he did. Um, so, I mean, not really surprised there, uh, especially with Frank being, a, you know, employee of the 49ers. I think he's even working in their scouting department. Um, so, and then on top of that, Luke McCaffrey, um, Chase also asked him uh, if he had met with the 49ers. He confirmed he's met um, with them, but he was kind of non-committal on uh, you know, letting us know if it was a uh, formal, informal, because it matters. Um, from my understanding, uh, these these teams get 30 formal sit-down meetings, so only 30 prospects um, that they can get a formal meeting. That's why that that's the the delineation between the two. If it's informal, it's a conversation, like you uh, like stop in the hallway, like. It's considered an informal conversation, informal meeting, which you can pretty much have with every prospect. So that's why we try to discern formal, informal, because teams only get 30 visits um, from my understanding. So um, that's why it's important to decide what that you know designation is. So uh, Brandon Rice had a formal meeting. Um, and I do think it was also uh, Frank Gore had a formal as well. Um, and then, like I said, Luke McCaffrey just kind of non-committal on. Oh, it's informal for Frank, excuse me. So informal for Frank, formal for Brendan, Luke non-committal, but confirmed they met. So uh, I know a lot of people have been excited about the thought process of bringing the legacy guys back. Um, so I'm gonna show you uh, Luke, uh, some clips of Luke McCaffrey's uh, interview. I'm gonna show you some clips of Frank Gore's interview. Um, but let me know what you guys think. Which, which, if you could pick one, just one, which of the three legacy players uh, would you want on the San Francisco 49ers? Let me know in the comments below. And then I'm going to post a video of um, more of the prospects that the 49ers have met with. That will be coming up. But take a look at Luke McCaffrey and Frank Gore Jr. right here. you describe South Florida football to somebody not familiar? Oh, we the best. We the best down there. Great talent, uh, especially in the skill position-wise. I feel like there's no other another state with it, who could compete with us in the skill position so yeah Frank at, at times at times at Southern Miss you would actually take reps at quarterback were you comfortable with that and that did that help you at all like seeing the game from a different angle uh for sure I did it in high school as well uh, I've been playing quarterback almost all my life so uh, I'm pretty familiar with the quarterback uh just doing it at college was just on a bigger platform but I've, I've been doing it pretty much my whole life Frank have you met with the 49ers Tampa Bay uh no I actually met with them at the East West Shrine Bowl game uh I met with them a couple times there, but none, none this week. Frank, you met with the 49ers? Uh, yes. 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 Formally, informally? Uh, informally. Informal. Yes, sir. Frank, if you could be an animal for 24 hours, what animal would you be? A lion, for sure. Why a lion? 
I mean, we can't go to jungle. <laughs> oh, I came up here a lot. Uh, it was cold, always cold when I came up here. Um, they had a good team with the Andrew Luck guys. Uh, they never got over the hump, but yeah, Indy was a great atmosphere for sure. Oh, that will be a blessing. Um, get to be able to put the gore back on the uniform. Um, that will be a blessing, and I'll be ready to put that name moving further than it already is. Uh, Frank Gore, uh, LaShawn McCoy, Barry Sanders, uh, Walter Payton, and you know, who I'm going to go with. I don't know. I don't know that fit. There's a lot with the fit, so I'm going to just leave that one open. I'm just curious, how, did you have all of your dad's, like, younger versions of your dad's jerseys growing up? No. No, I don't. No, you, you I didn't don't. Have, you didn't rock, like, a, a Colts Gore jersey back no, I got the Colts jersey. I got the Dolphins jersey, but I stopped there. How familiar are you with Jim Harbaugh from your dad's time with the Niners? Uh, I met him a few times. Um, I know he's a great coach. He won the national title this year, so... I know he's a great coach. I met him a few times. He seems like a good person for sure. Oh, Dade County High School? Uh, I'm going to go Johnny Ford. Uh, I'm going to go Duke Johnson, uh, Amari Cooper, uh, Dalvin Cook, and then we're going to go. I'm going to throw my boy Cam Kitchens in there. I'm going to throw my boy Cam in there. What was Little League Frank Gore Jr., high school Frank Gore Jr., say about the Johnson? Oh, that's too far ahead. I never seen me being this. Um, but without with the, with hard work and just keep going through it every day, taking it step by step. Uh, I got here and I'm ready to take it further for sure. Frank, your dad obviously plays. Uh, yeah, I know the game for sure. I know the game like the back of my hand, the ends is out of it. Uh. I wouldn't say he helped me because I have to go through it myself, but I probably got it probably in my genes from him. But yeah, I know it, the game like the back of my hand. I was wondering if maybe uh, if you had to do it over again, would you have given up the quarterback dream a little sooner? You know, it, I get that question quite a bit, and, and I don't know if I could ever see a world where I didn't follow the path I did. I think every coach I ever had from from, uh, from Little League to high school to you know, coaches at Nebraska or, or coaches at Rice always gave me you know, the same piece of advice. And, and it was both a compliment and it was something that I'll remember forever and, and advice that I'll hold on, which I'm so thankful to have those influences, which was you know, whether you want to go down the path of quarterback or whether you want to open it up to something else, I think you're going to succeed. And you know, it's just the approach that you go go about your, your business and the way that you, you attack it and try and get better and everything is, is what's going to make you succeed. And either way, it's going to take a lot of hard work. It's going to be, you know, a long, tough and, and fun process. But, you know, I think the way it played out for me, I'm so thankful because you know, I got to learn so much about myself. I got to meet so many great people. I got to learn, you know, a couple different systems. And, and I think I really just grew as an individual and grew as a football player more than I ever could the, the perspective maybe uh, from, a, yeah. from a quarterback helps you as a receiver? You know you're not always open, right? Don't <laughs> receivers always say they're always open? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, when it comes to the, the quarterback-receiver relationship, I think playing quarterback helps with the communication more than anything else. Uh, this last year, you know, me and JT Daniels got to meet a couple times every week. And, you know, we, we can speak the same language. I can speak the same language as, a, as an offensive coordinator and, and with every single coach on the staff because that's kind of what you're required to do. And so I think that's just, you know, value added and, and something that, that I'm blessed and I have a lot of fun doing. How's the combine experience been so far? What do you hope to show up? Yeah, it's, it's a blast. You know, the combine's such a unique experience because while well, you're not exactly playing football, you get to bring everybody out here and, you know, have them compete in the exact same drills on the exact same day and so it's been a lot of fun meeting with different teams and it, it's been a lot of fun training up to this i'm really excited to go out there and just you know put up whatever, whatever i can put up in every event and then kind of get back to football well, what, what are your expectations for the draft you know what round i don't know i, I i've heard everything i've heard 
literally every single every single round from the second to undrafted. And so I, I don't like to speculate on that. I'm living in the moment right now. And so I'm having a lot of fun in this process, being able to learn from the great guys here, the great guys at the Senior Bowl, all the people I'm training with down in Florida. And so it's just a great process and really focused you know, one day at a time. What would it mean if you had the option? What's the most intriguing scenario for you? Team major profession and coach by Max. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Both of them would be awesome. You know, there's there's a lot of cool storylines when it comes to the game of football. I'm just going to be excited to be playing football because uh, you know a lot of people don't get that opportunity as you as you grow up, and so I, I'm going to be happy wherever I am. Definitely, definitely. I mean, I, I watch my brother's games every week. Usually, you know, watch it on Sunday and rewatch it on, on the Monday whenever I can. And so, you know, it's so so cool watching Christian. So cool watching Max. He, he loves coaching. You know. He's doing a great job pulling all nighters every week. And, and so, it's been a lot of fun to be able to, to follow both those programs. What do you notice when you look at the Rockets? What do you notice when you look at the Rockets' offense and what they're doing? And can you see yourself getting Yeah, definitely. You know, you know, I take a lot of pride in the versatility of my game, being able to play in the slot out wide being able to play wildcat quarterback, being able to play running back. Their offense has a whole lot of speed. I don't think they're hyped that. And so, uh, you know, you know, I think they do such a good job of using motions, using shifts to open up their, their fast players. And you know, I, I think McDaniel is such a great play caller when it comes to that, just the way that he can manipulate defenses and, and the way that, uh, you know, they, they can break down a team like that. So it's, it's a lot of fun watching that. Have you met formally with the Niners? What? Have you met formally with the Niners? Uh, I, you know, through this and the Senior Bowl, you end up meeting with every team a couple times. And so I've met with them, and it's cool to have a lot of relationships with people that I, I knew kind of growing up through watching my dad, maybe not personally knew, but at least had some sort of a, uh, knowledge, you know, watching him as they played. And so it's, it's a cool experience to be able to see that now.